all you need is a config file to create data science DAGs in Airflow. Let's assume you have a housing data set and that you want to run linear regression on it to predict the price of house based on certain attributes such as number of bedrooms, area, parking and so on. And you want to do it by training your model and scoring it not only once but every Thursday at 11 a.m. Yeah, yeah, no biggie. People do it all the time using Airflow. But what if I told you that writing DAC code manually by hand can be tedious, can take hours of your time? What if I told you instead of that, you could just use this config file over here. Simply plug it into your code and press the play button. And boom! The Airflow DAG would be automatically created for you. Keep watching to learn how to create such a framework in Airflow in under five minutes or 10 minutes. Honestly, I don't know how long this video is going to be. Hey there everybody, my name is Saurav and in this video we are going to learn number one how to create a data science framework in Airflow which I will demonstrate using a toy framework that I created and number two how to empower your team of data scientists by enabling them to use it. So all of these would be discussed in detail and step by step. Let's jump in. Actually, before that, let's discuss why every data science team needs to have a data science workflow framework like that. Yeah, why create an automated data science framework like that in the very first place? What's the utility? And to that, I gotta say, why not? Data scientists are data scientists. They are good at math and algorithms, but are they good at programming? Okay, maybe a lot of them are, but do they really need to be good at programming or want to be good at programming? Most of them want to spend their time and energy in perfecting their already super complicated and fancy mathematical models, isn't it? So that means programming is an overhead for them. It's a burden. That is where I believe us, the data engineers could come in to help them out, to fill in that gap, to support them, enable them, empower them. Our team members, the data scientists or ML engineers. And that's why a good data engineer should definitely create a framework like that. Okay, but how do we even do that? Well, that is exactly what we are going to be discussing next. It's actually pretty simple. No, trust me, really, it's simple. There are just four components or files that work in tandem to create these DAGs. And those are, number one, the config file itself, which is stored in the directory within the DAGs folder, which contains the specifics of the particular ML pipeline. The one I just showed you at the beginning of the video, if you remember. Number two, the config file reader function. It's a function that's looping through each file in the specified directory where the configs live. And it's calling a second function called the DAG creator function for every config file it finds in that directory. Now, what's the DAC creator function? Well, that's our next component. Number three, the DAC creator function. So it reads through each line in the config file, parses them and defines the Airflow DAG and the tasks inside it. And finally, number four, the requirements file. Well, it's pretty simple. It contains the Python packages that we need to install in our Airflow environment. Now, let's deep dive into each of them one by one, starting with the first one and the simplest one, the config file. The config file contains inputs to a DAG and its tasks. Because we are trying to create a data science workflow, let's think about how would it operate and what are some things that we would need to specify. In order to write our ML DAG, we would need to specify the following. Let's ask these questions to ourselves. When is it going to run? What data set is it going to operate on? What's the file name for the data set? What algorithm are we going to use? Linear regression, KNN, logic regression, etc. Do we need to perform any transformations on the input data set? For example, if there are categorical variables in the data set, do we need to map them into numerical values? Do we need to create any dummy variables? What's the output column name in the data set? So basically, all the specific attributes of the workflow should be specified in the config file. Here's an example of a workflow that runs linear regression on a data set of housing data stored in an AWS S3 bucket. The model is run once every day at 5.30 a.m. The train model predicts the price of a house based on certain attributes specified in the input data set. 
here's another example of a config file that describes the pipeline that classifies plants into one of three varieties, Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica, from the super famous Iris dataset using a classification algorithm called Decision Tree Classifier. The config file reader function. All right, moving on to the next code file, the config file reader. As evident from the name, it reads the config files by looping through each file one at a time within the directory. Let's look at the code. Starts with a bunch of imports followed by the definition of the default arguments for the DAG. Next is the for loop. Check out line 19 and 20. I'm saying if the file is a readme file, just ignore it. Do nothing with it and continue looping into the next iteration. Next up, we are reading the contents of the file into a variable called file contents and creating a Python dictionary out of it. At line 24, we are defining the name of the DAG, which is going to be the same as the name of the config file. Then at line 26, we are calling a function called generate ML DAGs. The function generate ML DAGs is the core of how this framework works. We pass the DAG ID or the DAG name, config dictionary, and the default args as arguments to this function and it returns a DAG object. And finally, at line 33, we are adding the return DAG object to the current scope's global variables. This is an important step for Airflow's DAG processor to actually create the DAG, the DAG creator function. All right, moving on to the main function. So we are retrieving the schedule from the dictionary before we define the DAG in this line with the schedule and with the default args. And then within the DAG are four task definitions. Here's the first one then two, followed by third, and the fourth. Note, all of them are Python operators, which means that they're going to run a Python function, and those Python functions are defined at the top of the file. There are two separate helper functions here as well. Additionally, we can see the four set downstream function calls. They are defining the sequence in which we want the task to run the DAG in. In other words, those function calls are specifying the DAG dependencies. Here's a graph view of the DAG. Double clicking on the first Python operator and the function it is going to call. So as we are building a data science workflow, the very first step is going to get the data in which we will run the algo on. As the name suggests, this task will get the data. Looking at the function definition now, it is calling an S3 hook function, which is called check for key, which returns a dictionary with the key we need, only if it finds it in the S3 folder. Otherwise, it will return none. The second task is going to call the preprocess function. Let's quickly look at what is this function doing here. It gets the S3 file key and then reads the file contents into a CSV file using pandas. Then it does some transformations like mapping categorical variables into integers and creates dummy variables using pandas get dummies function. And finally, it loads it back to S3. The third task reads the preprocessed file, splits it into training and test data then it trains the model on the algorithm specified in the config file. After training the model, it saves the trained model back to S3 in a pickle file. Get ML predictions function. The last function is the get ML predictions function. And it is reading the preprocessed file that we created in the previous step into a pandas data frame at line 122. Then it is splitting the data frame up into test and training data sets. Basically, it's preparing the test data here. Next, it's reading the train model from the pickle file that we created in the previous task. At line 135, it's making the predictions on the test data by using the train model. Then some more transformations and then loads it back to S3 as a CSV file called output file. Requirements file. This is just a regular Python requirements file. We just added two packages to it, pandas and scikit-learn. Note, always pin the library version of your requirements file. There you go, that's a handy little quick tip there. Now that we have familiarized ourselves with the four code components, let's understand how do the four code file operate to make the framework work. At this point, we have laid the four pillars of foundation. So let's understand how does the framework actually work by making use of the four files that we just described above. Let's build on top of the foundation we just laid. Let's understand how are the above three files of code being executed and who or what is executing them. 
any code in the DAX folder is executed every 30 seconds or so by the scheduler. Check out the min file process interval configuration parameter for more details. You can tinker with this parameter to control CPU usage. The DAC parser process keeps checking for new files twice every minute in the DAX folder. So whenever we add a new config file, it'll automatically be picked up and create the DAC for us. So that means if I want to add a new DAG, I do not need to know how to write Python. I can just create a config file in the DAX folder and the config file reader and the DAC parser will take care of the rest. Now imagine how powerful this can be. We can automate DAGs for any kind of workflow we want. Once we have identified the kind of workflow we want, all we gotta do is abstract all the kinds of tasks we want in your DAG and put them in the DAG creator file and the input specific to the DAGs in the config file. And magic, the DAG would automatically be created for us. So in this video, we learned how to create DAGs automatically using an Airflow framework that we built literally from scratch. The framework consists of four components that are the framework's four pillars of foundation, namely the config file, the config file reader function, the DAG creator or DAG renderer function, and the requirements file. And not only that, this framework makes creating a DAG a walk in the park, which is as easy as creating a new config file. I'll provide a link to my GitHub repository and all the code that we went through today in this video. And yes, please feel free to clone and play around and explore the repository at your own pace. I would like to thank you and congratulations for being so patient with me today. If you have further questions that you feel I did not cover in this video, please let me know in the comment section below. That's all I got for you today. Click here if you want to know the basics of Airflow. Click here if you want to know how to install Airflow and write your very first DAG. That'll be it for today. This is Saurav. Until next time, peace.